welcome to Triforce episode Funf, aka Five. Oh, it is Five. You're right. <laughs> I'm joined. I am joined by Sips and Lewis. How are y'all? Hey, Great. See, I can do intros. I don't know why everybody Man. says I can't. That was amazing. I it, you multilingual. I'm multilingual. You nailed you even it. Put some German language in there. Yeah, a little bit of education for the people good. who listen who don't speak. You've taken gym. it to a higher level now. You've, you've set such a bar. The next person who has to do an intro is going to really struggle. I you have to do it in Japanese. The whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, konnichiwa. Oh, Internet san. for joining us. In, Domo arigato. Uh, yeah, and, podcast. Yeah. Man, oh, that's like that, all my that, Japanese gone. That was great. Mushi, guys. mushi. Mushi, mushi. <laughs> Yeah, pachinko. Uh, sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Whales. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Man, anyway. So, um, how's it anyway, going, guys? What's up? Great. What's new? Uh, nothing. Honestly, it feels like no time since we did the last one. You sound sick as hell. I think I have a child... It's not yeah. hilarious. Welcome, friend, to the world Welcome. of being around sickly children all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I've been sick for like four years yeah. constantly. Like, it's just the way that it goes. You just always feel like shit health-wise. I'll be okay. I've I, had a bit of a I, see this I, morning. I do have so. a tiny favor to ask you guys, which is oh. that Mrs. F uh, made a, a, a delivery is meant to be coming between 10 and 11. From okay. right. from uh, like it's a food shop. <laughs> now okay. I only found out about this on Skype this morning, and I said oh. to her, "That's oh. a really really bad time because I'll be doing the podcast with the guys." And she said, "Oh, I'm sorry." So hey, I will, I will, the doorbell will Listen. go, and I will have to run downstairs, and I will have to put food away. So I'll be about five to six minutes. I don't know if we want to pause. It's cool. At that point. We'll just edit it out. Just pause and we'll edit it out. We don't need to. Listen, we, we'll man. just keep it going. It's fine. Okay. You know, I love. They don't just. This, they right. don't just pause. The Starship Enterprise in space when Data That's has shit. to like go to his room and cry a bit or whatever because he's <laughs> developing his emotions. No, <laughs> the whole the crew come together, teamwork Data. makes the dream work. Fart on my face, and the ship uh. keeps going. So Paflax, don't worry about it. Okay. You got to go downstairs and you got to like put away your groceries or whatever. Just take your fucking time because okay. you know what? There's two guys here on the podcast that are just gonna hold it down while you're doing that. And then when God you get back, you. yeah. I, I thought it's something you could do. You just got to do a bit of work so know, that we I, can I, have a bit of I'm a rest too. I think what you could do is you guys could try and figure out what is on my shopping list. Ah, oh, man. And see if you can get 10 of the what items on my game. shopping list. What a now, fun game, yeah. <laughs> listen up, right? <laughs> First of all, when you said um, my wife would like you guys to do a favor, I thought, first of all, I thought... Maybe she listens to the podcast. Maybe no, she me wants too. to shout that, out. The first, no, thing, no. the first thing I thought was like, holy shit, she's a fan of the podcast. I can't no. believe it. Like my wife yeah. thinks that we're a bunch of fucking goons. But yeah. like your yeah. wife maybe thinks that we're cool dudes. No. Yeah, so that was what was running through our heads no. right there. And then the second thing after you sort of started saying she wants something, right? I was like... Three's oh, up. So... <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm up for it. Um, fully up for it. Don't, no, I, th I I sort of assumed that 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 she was gonna. It was gonna be something to do with the podcast, though, you no. know. But no, it was literally you have to do the shopping. Yeah. She almost. Yeah. She, it was, it was yeah. completely ignoring. No, I'm whole, sorry. I'm sorry. Man, yeah. it's funny though. It's a very People's domestic world thing. Just carry on without us. Well, so is she, I mean, is she off somewhere who? working, doing, bringing up the kids. Your wife. She's at work. Yeah. Oh, man. She's got a real job. She has. She actually left the house at 7.40 this morning. She won't get back till about the same kind of time this evening. Um, yesterday, she did not see the kids what, in, a, in an awake state at all. Like, she left oh when goodness. they were still asleep. She got back at about 11.30 at night. Um, well, look, the yeah. least we can do is put the shopping away for her. That's what I think. Isn't it? That's do you know what you know? Like she, the, she doesn't, like watch, that she doesn't watch anything. We are doing she doesn't watch it, anything yeah, yeah. that we do, by the way. Not Everyone a thing. here on the podcast is going to... It's a shame you can't take the mic downstairs and, like, you know, <laughs> take us through this journey. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, there's awesome. going to be, like, one paper bag just filled with Anusol. I, 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 I call it now. <laughs> like, 20, 25 the... boxes of hemorrhoid cream. I'm calling it now. That's all it is. So... Yeah. Okay. Let's go with the let's go with this list. So, Sips, you've you've said 
and your salt. Yeah. I reckon there might well be some lady products in there. Let me get a Well, there will be. There'll here. be like there'll be like some some lady lady hygiene. Well, I'm, I'm sort thinking of if products. it wasn't if it, if it was urgent. So you're saying if it was urgent. You know. Anusol. What? And yeah. you're saying lady products. L- lady products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something something like a towel. What or else have we got? Ladies' towels. Called? Yeah. Yeah. Those hygiene towels. Things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brackets those hygiene. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, clean, I'm gonna say dinosaur chicken as well because you got kids and like that's that's pretty staple, I think. Some well, so sort some, of some kind of a chicken some sort nugget. of fun shaped right uh, meal gotcha. thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm also thinking frozen stuff, right? Yeah, like frozen waffles, frozen peas, chips, um, frozen chips. She, You're gonna have said, a bag of you know, frozen chips in there. Because she was like, because 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 you could imagine, right, that what would happen is. If you told your husband to get the shopping at the door, okay, he would get, he would be like, oh, so he'd go down, he'd like have to get the, sh- do the shopping really quick and then he'd leave it there and go back to his game, right, finish off his game and then maybe come back and put it away later. But I think your wife has told you about this because there is frozen stuff in there. Absolutely. Sherlock yeah. Holmes. Very clever. Okay. Yeah. Well so, done, Mr. Holmes. I'm so, gonna guess. Um, I'm gonna guess a either a refrigerated or a frozen pizza is gonna be in there as well. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. And another one from me. I'm gonna guess that somewhere in there is going to be some cider. Cider. Okay. Yeah. Good guess. I think. It's a good guess. I think we're gonna get I, that. I one have for not sure. like the the shop is a mystery to me. She orders it online. It turns up. It's a bit like when you you order those things where they send you a package of food every week and you don't know what's going to be in it. That's what the shop is to me. So I unpack it and I'm like, what the hell is this? I didn't even know we ran out of that. You know, or, oh my God, now we have so much of this. So, yeah. because cause she's not here, but she has a vague idea of the things that we need. But I do pretty okay. much all the cooking and food and stuff because I'm in the house, yet she does the shop. So, t- so I, th- this list could be true. I do not know. Like, I can't even give you a hint because I don't know what's going to be on it. So you've got four more oh my things. God. Sips has just disconnected from our oh, chat server, so it's just going to have to be me telling you these four things. Okay. This, this whole podcast is going to be kind of just two of us, Ugh. like, occasionally, because Sips is now gone. I guess you're going to leave imminently. Yeah. And then it'll just be me on my own here, trying <laughs> to, like, this is, not what, this is not what I'd signed up for. Good God. I, I think, like, He's back. peanut butter. Peanut butter. Right? All right, we'll put that on there, yeah. Or or, or or some sort of conserve. I don't know, do you have Nutella? Peanut butter Nutella. slash Nutella, yeah. Something like that. And also, um, I mean, I, I think that that's more likely than jam, marmalade or honey okay. in your household. I'm just thinking that. Maybe that's wrong. I think some ice cream. Ice um, cream. I'm thinking like lollies rather than uh, tubs because okay, it's coming up lollies. summer. You've got kids. Yeah. Lollies. Lollies. Um, I mean, these are the things that I would put on the list. I right. think also squash of squash, some description. Squash. I'm going to go with Ribena, though. Oh, yeah. Um, because I, th- I think that, that that's kind of the thing you'd have. I mean, okay. personally... What, like in a carton or named. in no, a bottle, saying like, like, a, like, like the like syrup? One of the, I think he's saying like one of the big bottles so you can dilute it. I right? don't mean like the little cartons. Right. I mean a big bottle of liquid concentrated Ribena. Okay, yeah. I think uh, only, uh, uh, only really posh people get like the pre-mixed carton stuff because it's like kind of expensive, It's right? expensive, yeah. And also, yeah. like, my kids are not allowed to take that to school anyway. You have to take water. I'm yeah, also going to yeah. go with the cereal that I think your house has is those packs of seven or I think it's actually eight little boxes. Right. And, it's, you know, it's got one cornflakes in there, one, it's a variety. Right. One, one Cocoa Pops, one Rice Krispies, one Ricicles. One brown oh, flakes. Yeah. No one eats there's that. One's frosted always left flakes. Over. There's always a box of frosted one flakes. Frosties, always. Right. Okay. So there's the there's the ten. The other there's ones. the ten. I'll I'll just give a rundown recap for the viewers, do, the do, listeners do, at do, home. Dinosaur. Yeah. Dinosaur chicken. Do, 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 frozen do, chips. Do, do, pizza. Cider, peanut butter slash Nutella, ice cream, brackets, lollies, squash, brackets, Ribena, and a cereal variety pack. Cereal variety pack. I missed some of those. My um, I disconnected from Discord. I know for a sec. Sorry, we didn't notice. Carry on. Okay, cool. It's all right. So, did you have any other emergency bonus items that you think are on there? Is a wild card sips? Oh, wild card. Uh, Let me get the pen. Wild card. Um, I'm gonna say that somewhere in there, there's gonna be a variety pack of chips, like potato chips, 
like to crisps. like the um, okay. yeah, like okay. the little grab bags of like you know, my walkers or whatever. Bonus item as a risk is going to be marmite. Oof. What about that's digestives? Less, you should have said like a pack oh, of digestives. Just because, just because of your response there. Or I know tea that bags. That's not, tea bags. That's not you a You should gamble. have said tea bags. Tea bags isn't a gamble. It's got no, to be what I should strange. have said, what I should have told you. Some guys. nabob bags. coffee. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what, here's what no. I didn't tell you guys, which I could have done, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Want to give you too many hints. My mum. Big Mama Flex yeah. is coming up to stay. Oh no! For twelve oh, crap. days. So, so there's going to oh, be like there's going to be a I'm pre-made so trifle sorry, in there P-flex. somewhere. It's all based gonna... around what an old lady might like to have for the next twelve days staying in our house. Fuck. So there's, there's food stuff. Cabbage. Sort of there's going to be a cabbage in there somewhere too. <laughs> Boiling oh, cabbage. No. That's old people love to do that. Potted herring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't oh, be. Man. The weird thing about um, like kids are quite fussy, but the weird thing is, I think you have a bell curve of fussiness, and at the yeah. at the low and high end, that like is the age group. So my kids are pretty fussy because they're still kids. They're getting less fussy as time goes on. Like they'll try pretty much anything now. Some of it they like, yeah. some of it they don't. And then my mum is exceptionally fussy. For, for you know, from from maybe about ten years ago, maybe fifteen years ago until now, it's, it's like progressively fussier and fussier. So, and and the weird thing is, because she's an old lady, their appetites are like tiny. So, mentally, she still thinks she's a normal person, not an oldie. So, she still asks for these big portions of food, and then she has like three bites of it. And she's like, oh, oh, that was filling. And I'm looking at her like, you know. My seven-year-old is like eating ten times the amount that you are. So it's is kind she of funny. is she a dessert sharer as well? Like, do you get that? Do you get like, uh, is there an old person in your family who orders a dessert when you go to a restaurant? They're She's like, always about the dessert. Yeah. Can I can I can I split this with somebody? I couldn't possibly eat the whole thing by myself. <laughs> she will do that. But and the, then the, it the turns thing up, is she'll, she'll eat hardly any of her she's... dinner, and then she'll still have dessert. It drives me drives my, me and my wife crazy. I know it's because the older you get, the more you become like a kid again, right? And yeah. then when you're super elderly, you're like a little baby again. You like <laughs> shit yourself freely. <laughs> somebody has to look after you and feed you and stuff like that. And and, and, and yeah, you, you know, get just, taken eating, to like nursery just eating and your dessert we put with all your other old friends. You know, exactly, exactly. Just eating dessert is like the start of that. Because when you're a kid, all you want to do is fucking eat dessert, right? Like my son, we, we put like pasta in front of him. We put like nice, you know, mashed potatoes and like greens and stuff. And like all this really good stuff. And like he won't touch it. And it doesn't matter what you say to him or whatever. He's just like not interested at all. But then yep. if you put like a cake in front of him, it's gone in like 2.5 seconds. He just wants to eat chocolate all the time. He wants to have like a candy necklace and like a candy ring and stuff. And like, you know, fair enough. I mean, I wish I could still do that. I would just be crippled with like heartburn and, you know, diabetes and whatever. I think this but- is what happens, you know, like I stopped eat. you know, as you get older, you feel this creeping in, right? Like I stopped eating Haribo because it made my teeth ache, you know, because of the amount of sugar yeah. and stuff like that. Like at a certain point, you just, I, I then again, like I think as you get older, you start feeling this creeping disgust for like, like it's cr- the creeping criticism that old people tend to have where they seem to kind of criticize something that's fairly unreasonable, you know? And so it's like, you know, you've got a plate of peas there and, she's, and you, your nan says, Oh, I don't do peas. It's like, <laughs> what do you mean? What's? Oh no, you, the all oh, the peas. You know, they all oh, they they make me make me belly tickle. It's like, well, <laughs> mm. I get a big rash on my pussy. <laughs> 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 oh my god oh, fuck. Uh, well you yeah. should be feeding them to the cat then you stupid woman <laughs> you stupid man jeez wow. tell's your problem yeah mm. i know what you mean it's like it, it's 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 a pretty weird one but getting kids to eat stuff in general i think the older you get your taste buds change too right like i used to be really fussy when i was younger i'd only eat certain things but now i eat anything because yeah. Now, when I'm hungry, I'm just fucking hungry. Like, I haven't eaten for a while sort of thing. Because if you're busy or whatever, you lose track or you go out or or something and you just, like, don't get a chance to eat. When it comes to it, um, when food is presented to me and it's prepared already, I'll just fucking eat anything. Like, it doesn't matter what's on the plate. Like, if somebody baked their shit on a plate, <laughs> I, would, I would eat it because I'm so hungry. Like, I'm just, I'm ready to go sort of thing. Well, I'm not saying I would enjoy it, but I would still eat it. 
That's good. That's manners, quite honestly. I know. Yeah, and and then and then you'd the, save room for dessert. I think. Well, not only that, I would leave a little tiny bit at the end. I wouldn't completely clear my plate because apparently that's good manners too. In what, some leaving a bit cultures, yeah, leaving a little tiny bit is like good manners. Apparently, I know. It's I know. Seen in as, China, it's seen it's, as very uh, good it's, manners. It's, it's yeah. Manners, so if yeah. you finish your plate in China and Japan, a place that like they'll bring you a new one because they'll assume that you haven't been satisfied by it. And also, it's sort of good manners to belch and stuff and be like, oh. I'm, Rub your belly and yeah, be like, I'm oh, no prob- oh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm probably like the <laughs> best mannered person you'll ever meet in that case. I'm not sure <laughs> farting is the uh, is the same, treat the same, but it's close. I feel like it should. I don't know why there's so much discrimination against farting. I mean, it's it essentially stinks. the same thing. Yeah, but you're, so does burping. It's yeah, just, but, you're, but the difference is you're farting particles of shit into the air that someone's had to inhale. Yeah. That's rude, man. I don't want to breathe your poop. I know, but it's pretty satisfying, right? When you smell one of your own, you're like, No, oh. I hate it. What's, what's satisfying about the smell of poop? I don't know. Like, if it's your own, that's, ah, sometimes, it's gross. I, sometimes gross. I find it comforting. Like, Ugh. you know, if I'm just sitting in my garage farting, I'm like, this is nice. You know, I you're can, an animal. I can do this all day. I think the day. farting uh, increases along with a healthy diet, though. Sometimes you see this, like, skinny yoga girl, and you know that she will be... The worst, most stinkiest fart. Yeah, eggs, girl ever. like just the eggiest farts you've ever smelled <laughs> yeah. in your life. And it's like, how can a small, such a small creature generate such incredibly disgusting farts? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 a weird thing, right? Like you see all these thin, beautiful Disney princesses, right? And yeah. you know, really hot girls on Reddit gone wild or whatever. I don't know where you see them. Oh, Gentlemen yeah. boners, maybe. Which forums are they you browsing? Just think. Yeah. The, the, the thinner and more healthy they look, the worse their fart smell. You know what my grandma told me one time? It's diet. Healthy diet. What? It, what it's kind of related to this. I was talking about, I think I was talking about Wayne Gretzky one time, who's a famous <laughs> to your hockey grandma. player. Yeah, to my grandma. I was young okay. and I was into hockey at the time. So I'm like, you know, Wayne Gretzky, this, that, the other. I, I think I read an article about it or whatever. And she Let was like, oh, okay. you know, it's Wayne snowed, Gretzky is right? a great hockey it's player. all day. Right. And you have gone out, your, your mum has said, hey, can you take this uh, big pack of peas over to your grandma? Because she, <laughs> yeah. she needs them. And so you've gone, oh, Gran, I want to play um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Mum, sorry. And, and she's like, oh, all right, fine. After a game of Street Fighter 2 Turbo. So you do a favour for your mum, you go out to your Gran. He's trudged through the snow, the Canadian, Canadian summer, still snowing, it's freezing. Um, you, you trudge all the way through. It's like milk frozen to people's like doorsteps. I'm just trying to set the scene, okay? All right. You get to her house, right? She lives in like a a, a log cabin, okay? okay. There's smoke coming out. I mean, There's like okay. fur trees sure. all around it, covered yeah, in yeah, snow. Yeah. Okay. It's made of gingerbread. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the door opens. <laughs> She's got okay. that comical old granny voice too that Lewis is about to do. <laughs> She's <laughs> she's there on the doorstep. Yeah. Oh, Good morning, Chris. That's right. Oh, yeah, it's it is. wonderful to see you. Thanks for visiting your old grand. Hi, grandma. It's been so lonely. God, I haven't been out in Canada. the woods for a while to your log cabin made of gingerbread. Man, this place Please never come changes. Please warm yourself by the oven. Oh, yeah, okay. She I'm, says. Yeah, and then so I say, Grandma, I trudged all the way out here with my snowshoes and my pet polar bear to tell you that, um, <laughs> man, I really like Wayne Gretzky. Like, I just think that this guy is a great hockey player. He's really good. You know, he's done some great things. Um, I was reading about him and stuff. And my grandma turns around to me uh, in her gingerbread log cabin with the comical voice that Lewis just did. And she says, you know what? That's great. It's really great to admire somebody and look up to them. But you know what? Now imagine them sitting on the can taking a shit. And I was like, <laughs> what? And then I imagine Wayne Gretzky sitting there, pants around his ankles, you know, reading the paper or like farting around on his iPad or whatever, taking a shit. And I thought, I get it. You know what? They're just people. All these people that you look up to, they do all the same shit that you and me do in their spare time, right? Like take a shit. Sometimes they make like really smelly farts. Sometimes they throw up involuntarily listen, on the no. bus. <laughs> you know, other times I, I, I they trip. I think she got that the wrong way around, though. And fall into a though. snowbank or whatever. And I thought, this is good advice, actually. And now I don't I, look up to anyone anymore. Because yeah, now, I mean, I th- I think anytime I see someone around. in the news or whatever, I'm like, that guy shits all the time. <laughs> and I'm picturing you're it right now. You're not supposed to think about your role models like that. I think you're supposed to think of people who are kind of 
not as not as good. You know, isn't that yeah. isn't that what you're supposed to do if you like don't like someone? You think, oh well, let's just imagine them, you know, just taking, taking a, a dump. shit. Yeah, yeah, just having just having a really bad time as well. They've eaten something that's just not gonna not coming out, or it's. Really I don't spicy. know though. It has it's the like, reverse effect. Somebody that you really dislike, there, like, or straining. somebody who's really evil. You just imagine them, Reaching you know, like for the anus hole. They're not being particularly evil in that context right they're sitting there struggling to like wipe their ass like for the 50th time because they've taken a particularly bad shit and you're like you feel kind of sorry for them right because you're like oh poor guy you know sure he's like trying to enslave the human race or whatever but right now he's just struggling like any other guy taking a bad shit and just you know trying to get out of that bathroom as soon as possible to go back (laughs) and play wow or whatever you know what i mean (laughs) yeah like yeah it, it's a, it's a for, dose for of humanity. Yeah, he's dry. You know, he, he hasn't got his shopping order of his new wet wipes or whatever, just to give him that kind of refreshing, yeah, clean, cleanness down there. And they ran out of Anusol, and his online order they gave him a replacement, which didn't do the trick. And you know, you just think, oh, poor guy. And he has to record a podcast in five minutes. That's right. The delivery's coming in like two and hours, so he's, he's have hoping to tell that them. his two co-hosts will cover for him as well. While yeah. <laughs> <He's off. laughs> this is getting very <laughs> specific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, um, damn, that's a strange thing. So, I guess, like, I don't know, you, I don't know why your grad just sort of told you that out of thin air. I mean, she's like really old school. Do you like, think old she was people pretty racist? She was do stuff, pretty. Do stuff sm- spitefully when they see someone having a lot of fun. Do you think, do you think sometimes they see young people having a lot of fun or, or enjoying know. something, you know, and they I mean, say, you like Wade Gretzky? Well, just imagine him taking a big shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what I do think you think of him like, now? I don't know if it was like a family thing or like a generational thing, but I got the feeling that, you know, their idea of kids, like, like my grandma was really nice. She was really, really great. She was like, she would always like get me cool stuff, like on my birthday and for Christmas and stuff. Anytime she'd visit, I'd be like super excited and stuff. I got on really well with her. I used to like spend my, like Canada day, there were like fireworks and stuff. I'd go sleep at her house and watch fireworks and stuff. It was really good. But she came from a generation where I think that kids were like, um, you know, seen and not heard sort of thing. And I think it was like one of those things where it was considered kind of funny to like troll kids, <laughs> like if if that's possible back then sort of thing. Because like, mm. I don't know, I think like, I just get the feeling that she was always sort of like trolling me a bit, like, you know, with like the taking a shit thing or whatever, but like not in like a super mean way. Like, I think she just found it a little bit funny or whatever. I, th- I, I think it's Maybe because... Maybe she was like ahead uh, of her time in that sense. But and, well, if you think about the way kids used to be raised, like if, if you've been a child uh, at any other time in history other than pretty much now, it would be a pretty God awful thing. Like being kids, being a kid used to be awful because they used to think the kids were born with like original sin and they were basically needed to be saved and they were bad and they should be seen and not heard. And, yeah. you know, things like the Victorian times had like the workhouse or, you know, that's it. If you're you're a poor kid and you're orphan, that's it. You belong to the state now and they're just going to work you like a dog. And it's Ugh. like, it's, it's awful. Um, and of course, you know, diseases and lack of education and opportunities and stuff like that. So I think a lot of older generations remember how grim and hard it was when they were kids. And I think there's a, a natural human sort of feeling in some people to feel that I didn't have this, so no one should yeah, have yeah. it. Like a this very generation's selfish... got it way too easy, so yeah, now I have to like always been saying shatter that. his dreams by making him imagine Wayne Gretzky taking a crap. Yeah, it's just I, yeah, I think it's kind of a, I think it's a selfish thing, and maybe when people get older, they get maybe a little bitter because if you if yeah. like we we can't imagine what it's like to be eighty. I mean, no. you know, we we can we can potentially try and imagine what it's like, but it's going to be weird. You're, you're eighty. You're you're nearing the end of your life, and you see all this stuff going on. It all seems so frivolous to you. Why aren't people panicking about the fact that I could drop dead at any minute? Why aren't people just following me around saying, "Holy shit, this is this could be this person's last minutes on earth when they take a particularly difficult poop." You know, <laughs> so I, oh, I, I shit, kinda, I broke my hip. Yeah, exactly. Really, really or they just strain one. too much. You know, <laughs> something in their brain pops. That's it. Like it, it's tough, baby. So there's there's it, not the, the the level you you're coming over. You're not saying, Grandma, how are you? How are your bowels? 
here are some frozen peas. I hope it'll put everything right. I hope you're okay. Your first first word out of your mouth is, man, Wayne Gretzky's fucking awesome, Grandma. Yeah, Did you and see? the whole time she's like, you fuck you and you're fucking Wayne Gretzky, you entitled little shit. Like, yeah. like, that's what she's thinking. And um, I'm dying. Yeah, but and then, of course, on the other hand, she's like, yeah, I'm getting old. So, like, maybe, yeah, I can see where all these bitter emotions would come from. But I never, like, I never took it as, as that she was bitter. I always just... I think she was just like joking around and, and having fun yeah, sort of yeah. like at my expense or whatever. I, I, and it was pretty funny. I was old enough to, to realize that. I wasn't like I, I super young I don't think that as oh, you get the old, door. you automatically Good luck, turn okay. into some sort of monster. Oh my God. Well, he's off. Right. He's but gone. but I, I mean, I think, I think you know, gen, generally people who are good in in life will be good when they get old. I think, man, death is like something we should probably talk about on this podcast. Oh my God, do we scum. have to? No, I don't yeah. think we should. You know what I think we should talk about instead? Birth. I don't I don't even know. But yeah, maybe. But like, no, I don't want to talk about death at all. Okay, we'll just okay, be quiet for like You know what? You've minutes. twisted my arm as far back as it'll go. Let's talk about death. <laughs> what are your thoughts? What are your <laughs> thoughts on getting old and dying? See, for me, from my point of view, I think that like when you're young... Dying or the thought of death is like, holy shit, like I do not want to die. You know, like I still have a lot of things I want to do. I still have a lot of things I want to experience. Well, no, 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 no. That's not I want to have sex works. with so, somebody in outer so space first, and stuff. First of all, when you're young, you have no conception of death and you feel that you, you, you can't die. Okay? okay. And then as you get older, you're, you're, you tend to be reckless with your mortality in a sense. People, people dive off stuff and motorbike around, you know, they, they feel invulnerable. Certainly yeah. for a while. And then what that follows up on is sort of this period of, of time when you have stuff to live for. Like, you know, you want, oh, you're like, oh, God, I hope I don't die because I've got to bring up these kids. I've got these, I've got important things to do. Yeah. And then I think there's this, this level of acceptance that comes with, you know, I've, I've, I've done everything. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I think there's, there's that, that's that classic um, trio of, of energy, which I love. Like, it's like an XKCD thing where, when you're young, you have loads of energy and loads of time, but no money. When you're, you know, middle-aged and you have a job, you have plenty of money and plenty of energy, but no time because you're working, bringing up kids, doing all the stuff. Yeah. When you're old, you have all the time in the world, all the money in the world, but no energy. Um, so there's always something missing at all stages of, 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 of life, if you like, in a sense. You know, you don't, you know, you don't see... Um, I think I think we we as you get older you get a picture of what it's like to be old and I think being old is is tough you know it's achy your your sort of your bones and and things are not as not as, as as good as they were your reactions are not as good your senses are not as good yeah. everything is kind of a bit it's a bit of a sad thing to happen and I think that it is a natural thing to to die but I think that if you're if you're going to die early I have a I have a really sort of I can't remember whose quote this was but but and I'm probably paraphrasing it as well but. Death is a little bit, I consider it to be death a little bit, like um, being asked to leave a party that's still going on before right. it's finished, you know. So it's yeah. like, the party's going to happen, the party's happening right now, you're at the party, the party's going to carry on without you, um, but you're going to have to leave, sorry. You know, and it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky, it's a little bit like, oh, okay, you don't want to leave, no one wants to leave, because the party's going on, everyone wants to stay at the party, but it's, you can, I, I like to think of it like a kind of, you know, if you're, if you're, most people are like, oh, okay, maybe it is time to leave. Maybe I've been at this party long enough. I think, I think, I think a lot of people are very accepting of, of death. And it's, it's, it's. When you're older, mm. I think, yeah. Especially if you're riddled with like health problems and stuff, you probably, I would imagine that, and like me thinking about this in my own terms, I would probably be pretty fed up. And I, I think I, you know, if you're not able to enjoy life and you're, you're not enjoying life and you're, you're quite elderly and you're plagued with like health problems or whatever, maybe you do get to the point where you're like, yeah, it's time for me to go. You know, like uh, there's, this will never get better. You know, I'm never going to be able to do the things that I, I used to do that I used to have fun doing or whatever. And like, it's a sad thing to think about, right? Like that somebody could be ready to die. But I think that like your brain maybe sort of convinces you that that's the case sort of thing. Cause like, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but like, like, Older people, when they get um, to the point where, you know, like, it, it seems that like, like older people could one minute be living by themselves, totally self-sufficient, be quite happy, just doing this, the stuff that they've done all the time. And then they get, they get a little bit sick and maybe hospitalized because of that, because they're very fragile. And then they almost just give up and die. 
pretty much. You I'm know back. what I mean? Like it's. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find that that happens like time and time again. It's like that that sort of thing where it's like, I'm never going to be able to go back to my place. You know, people are telling me that I have to be looked after now and stuff. And like, Man, you, you just I, sort I of accept that, that you're just like, oh, well, fuck, well, my life is I over don't now. Know. I don't think it's always like that. I think that's a very kind of conceptual thing. I mean, dying is a part of life. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, probably live by some sort of... Um, well, a lot of people, it's very much tied up with religion because it's, it's a very difficult concept to deal with, with, with dying. People like to imagine that it's not the end because that makes it easier. Um, yeah. You know, but then again, I think that people who aren't religious, which is increasing the proportion of the, 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 the planet, um, really feel that dying, ha, ha, but no afterlife doesn't mean that there's nothing to live for quite the opposite you know you've only got one life it's everything to live for you know you should make the most of the life that you have rather than thinking oh well i fucked this one up i'll, I'll see you in the afterlife i'll do it again you know it's like yeah. well that's not the way to live i think i think that there is this um stigma around talking about dying and stuff like that and and you know especially in america when it's so kind of you should fight every single second of your life for every single, you know, you, you know, you should, you should live um, for the next five years as a worm rather than, you know, go out in a blaze of glory kind of thing. It, Man, it, I'm well, all about the blaze who of have glory. These, these Are big you? kind of, yeah. Um, big time. Yeah. Sorry. So, wow. P flax, let's move on to your shopping list. Oh my okay. God. Okay. Right. We need it. Let's get out. Because we, we, we went down a dark I alleyway. Know, I heard. We went to really dark. You should never leave again, P Flax. Let, let's this take, is what happens. Let, let's take this turn with open number Data one. Data returns from his chamber crying and he finds Picard and Riker having a conversation about dying on the bridge. God. And, and yeah. everybody else is like really depressed. Worf is like face in his hands. He got like Sulu, who's not even like part of this timeline, just like <laughs> fucking crying in a corner in the fetal position and stuff. Never leave the bridge again, Data, is basically what I'm saying. We need you. We need you so bad. And he just walks back in and goes, Captain, your Anusol is here. <laughs> Captain, it seems that 25 boxes of Anusol have arrived. <laughs> Shh, He's been Data, transported hush. in from And it Starbase was delivered 45. by Timmy two times. So actually now we have... 50 boxes of Anusol. Anusol was not on the list. That's, the that's, a, that's one X. Damn. Oh. There are no lady products on the list. That gets an X. She must have some from a previous Damn. week. Right. Is your D wife like a robot or something? She doesn't need any of that shit? She didn't need it today. Fuck. Bonus. What is this? Freezer? Oh shit! I didn't put More the freezer. I didn't put the freezer stuff away. I didn't see the freezer. That back. was the one thing be, you were supposed to do. Not leave the bridge. No. Oh god. Okay. Oh, well, anyway. So, so, so Picard. Anyway, when we you have die, saved Pure Flats's freezer stuff because oh, he wouldn't have. He wouldn't have put it away. Yeah. If he'd just come back to join the podcast, we would have done the rest of this hour-long podcast. Man, and would have been like. Imagine be like his wife got home and there was just a bag of like rubbery defrosted oven chips like sitting on the counter how depressing would that be and just a melted ice tub of ben and jerry it's just oh like, man man it's just like slowly leaking all over the counter like yeah i thought well, was, he wouldn't have put it on the counter it's on the floor in the hall on the carpet oh that's true you know? that's and the dog's worse, like though. licking up the chocolate like get up off the, the floor. carpet and stuff see that's the kind of shit i'm talking about though you make like a big boob like that and you get to the end of the day and you're like, fuck, what have I done? Like, maybe I'm just ready to go now. Maybe like I'm ready for <laughs> the Grim Reaper to come and take me away. Fuck, I can left the Ben and Jerry's you want, out. You have suicidal thoughts. Fresh, fresh pasta that's what meant a, to be refrigerated. What a it's gone all, all, all hot and stuff. And like, oh, uh, and all I'm that just, lettuce is all wilted. and It's um, all wilted away. And we'll never be able to make like, like a Caesar soul. salad now. Yeah, and like... You know, how do I recover from this? Maybe I can't. And that's it. You're done. You're oh ready my to go. Gosh. Your brain convinces you that now's the time. You've done everything. You've done the best you can, but you you fucked up big time at the end there with Ben and Jerry. Okay. Okay. Hey, what's up? Welcome Phew. back. Oh, Di man. Dinosaur chicken. That's an yes. X. That's an X. There was no, no dinosaur either. chicken? Frozen chips. Oh, Tick. Woo! <gasps> big old bag. Now, what kind of chips do you think they were? 
Uh, I'm going to say McCain chips. crinkle cut. They were crinkle cut chips. That gets oh. an extra Motherfucker. one. Motherfucker. You know how I know this? Because <laughs> kids love crinkle cut they for some do. reason. They do. What the fuck? I don't get it. Pizza, that's a tick. There was a pizza. Aha, man. Cider, household that's a sounds... big old tick right there. Yeah. Big old tick. Peanut butter slash Nutella, not on the list. Holy shit. And I'll tell you I why. I can't believe it. Because lots of nut allergies, right? No, no, none, no nut allergies, nothing like that. Mrs. F just got you can get in Selfridges, which she works right near, personalized jars of Nutella. So it has your name on it, spell or whatever name you want on it. So she got one of those each for the kids. So we didn't need that. So that gets an X. They each have their own Selfridges <laughs> jar of Nutella. <laughs> yeah, I know. You just said Man, one yeah, of the most to be posh a, things it has to be I've like, ever heard in my life. It doesn't cost There's, any more. There's got to be a Reddit picture of this where it's like one jar says Katie, one says Billy, one says Fiona, and then one says asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now, you said ice cream, but Lewis yeah. specified lollies. It was two oh. tubs of Cornish clotted cream ice cream. So I'm going to give you uh, half a point. That's an, if I'd known the nan was coming, I was I, I was thinking maybe Ben and Jerry's cream. fish fiesta. You know, with like the chocolate the fish, fish food? and stuff. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So good. Oh right. man, it's really good. Uh, fish fiesta. It's like a it's like a <laughs> fish party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, all the fish are made of chocolate, though. That's the catch. The best kind uh, of party. Yeah, the best. Man, kind they're of like fiesta. walking down the street and people just grabbing them and stuffing them in their face. That's right. Oh, there was like... no squash. Oh, of any damn kind. it! No, she never buys me squash. I have to get it. So how many? I this. mean, of the things that Lewis has has thought were going to be on the list, right. how many ticks has he got? No, I'm we're, saying we're, none. We're, we're still yeah. going, guys. So let's wait. Uh, Cereal variety pack, not on the list. There was a. Oh. There was. There was not. There damn. was. Uh, there was no cereal ordered actually because we got a shitload already. I didn't want to give anything oh. away. Oh. Oh. All right, but. Yeah, there was no cereal. What kind of cereal do you have in your house? Let me I'll guess. There's we, a big old box of Weetabix in there. There is a big old, like the biggest box you get. It's just like racks of Weetabix in this kind of military wrapper. It look, it's Fuck very, yeah. uh, right. very sort Fuck of basic. Yeah. And my youngest loves that with a little bit of honey drizzled on top. She's all about that. Ooh. Also, yeah, yeah. mini Weetabix that have chocolate chips in. That is yeah. my jam. I love nice. those. Crunchy nut cornflakes. We've got uh, porridge, ready break. And um, you gotta have porridge and ready bread. You gotta, like, and then alpha bites, to. which is like these little things. Yeah. They're, they're quite healthy anyway. So that, uh, yeah, yeah, we got um, those too. Yeah, they're good. So crisps, incredibly, no crisps were ordered. I'm gonna have to have a word uh, with 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 Mrs. F. About I that. thought that was a pretty safe one, actually. Uh, me but too, dude. And it's I'm one of those things where you don't always get them because sometimes it's like, nee, if they're in the cupboard, you're just gonna eat them, so we're not gonna get them, sort yeah. of thing. It's like hit and miss sometimes. And then other times it's like, yeah, man, I'm, we're feeling fresh and loose. Let's just buy 20 bags of variety <laughs> crisps. Yeah, great. And uh, finally, the Lewis's uh, wild card, Marmite, not in this house, uh, not in this uh, house. Yeah. Um, so in grand total, you guys scored four points. I think those four points are all me as well. Pretty sure. Were. I'm yeah. pretty sure yeah. the things I recommended. Lewis well, did get half a point for ice cream, bad. and you got a bonus half point for getting the crinkle cut. So that's yeah. three. That's a total of four. So pr pretty poor, guys. Pretty, pretty bad. Poor. I mean, little did I know yeah. you were such Nutella fans that you invested in oh, the love it, yeah. highest poshest customized Nutella customized yeah. jars. I don't think it costs yeah. more. Like genuinely, Mrs. F is is not the kind of uh, person to Fiona. go and drop money. Tiffany, fetch. Fetch your own jar of <laughs> Nutella Tiffany. from Portia, the cupboard. Portia, put that Nutella down. <laughs> Portia. <laughs> Portia, stop eating your Nutella straight out of the jar. Portia, does that, does that jar of Nutella one say Portia? does no. not eat Nutella with one's finger, Portia. <laughs> <laughs> one, one uses a servant's finger. <laughs> oh, oh. Fuck, yeah. Lick it off his juice's finger. P-Flax, your cupboards sound a lot like my cupboards yep. and your freezer, fridge, freezer. I mean, you sound like you've got pretty much all the same shit I got. Yeah. It's an Plus age thing, I think. I think we uh, got like uh, we got like some like ultra healthy peanut butter. Like it's like organic peanut right. butter. 
And man, it gets like all the oil kind of like seeps to the top. Yeah, so yeah. when you open it up, it's like really oily. You got to mix it all up. I yeah. kind of like it though. Because when you're mixing it all up, you can smell the peanut butter and oh. it just gets you ready for like yeah, fucking yeah. peanut butter toast. Oh, I, I man, feel you, really buddy. Good. Peanut butter toast is something that people in the UK don't really eat a lot. But I, uh, I loved it. Like, I, I mean, I find it the ultimate dad thing. Like, if I go in the kitchen, I'm like, man, I'm hungry. Peanut butter toast every time. Like, Ooh. I'll do it. Three or four slices of that shit. I'm like, <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Uh, yeah, I go big when I go peanut butter toast. Wow. Like, I love it. Yeah. It's really good. And quick, too, right? Like, yeah, it requires yeah. basically no effort. It's Especially if you have a toaster meal. that can do four things at once. You're like, yeah, no problem. Boom. But Dinner is so. Uh, I had. I had my toaster set the other day. Okay. This is crazy. I So we have the, like the, the four pop toaster. Okay. And I had the dials set to like three because I, I like a, like a crispy toast. Oh right? my God. Yeah. Okay. This so is I, one of the, I, I'm, I'm already on edge when you're talking about toasters and dials, but yeah, carry yeah. on. So I had the dials set to three, but I didn't how you realize. Liked that's yeah. how you like that's, them. That's right? how, how I like them. How high up is three? Because is this like a one to 10 scale or a one to five or what? It's a one to five. So okay. it's like, it's like on the crispy side. Okay? Okay. okay. So I had them set to three and you constantly have to reset them because my wife sets them to like one. So it's like barely toasted or whatever. Ugh. And that's just her thing. But I like my, my shit toasted. So I pop the toast down. Okay. And I wait a couple of minutes because it, you know, at three, it takes like a couple of minutes or whatever. So I was like off doing something else. I think I was like, just like washing some dishes quick or whatever. And then the toast popped, but both popped at the exact same time. And I heard a beep at the exact same time. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, what's that beep sound? I don't know. So, so okay, like, so I just get the for toast people who out. don't understand this, so Sips's toaster has two different push down bits. Mm. Okay? Yeah, yeah, the two push down right. bits. And and this 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 time specifically, it, they both popped at like the exact same exact time, same millisecond. Yeah, okay, which very like, unusual. Very unusual. Um, <laughs> so this happens, and I'm like, oh, whatever, you know. I eat my toast and do a couple of things. I come back into the kitchen maybe like half an hour later, and like open up the fridge, and there's no light. I was like the fuck like has the fucking fridge light gone like i can't believe it and then like i tried to put on the kettle fucking didn't work or whatever it's like what the shit like half of the kitchen is without power and the fight it's it was the fucking toaster the double pop at the same time tripped the fucking switch wow for like that side of the kitchen it was crazy no. i couldn't believe and the beeping <laughs> sound was no. the was the fucking bottle maker for the baby powering down it's like it never been powered down before or whatever i was like beep and like and, and that affected it as well and i was like well, fucking pushing it it's like i need to make no, no, a bottle no. the baby's crying the it's like i had to switch things on and off again and then i had to go fucking upstairs to the switch box and like oh. switch on half the kitchen again because of the toaster fucking crazy okay well let me just s stop you for a second what you've done here is a very classic thing that humans and animals do which is a sign a cause to something which is probably not the cause but you assumed it was you assumed that the fact that you lined up your two dials and your toaster to precisely three and so they popped at the same time and that immense popping of double toast which is so unexpected and unpredictable right in it causes any a kind of kitchen setting, oh, no, I'm would it cause some I, I, I know you're thinking search. that that or, wasn't the thing it was let me okay tell it you definitely what the alternative was. is okay the alternative is that the kitchen lost power and it automatically powered off the toaster, which instantly double popped the both sides at once. Yeah. What's the more likely thing? Well, I don't see how half the kitchen would just lose power let for me, no let reason. Me ask you Something's got to trip the switch. Let me ask you a question, question though, Sips. All right. And I, I've, I've recently had our kitchen redone. And, okay. And we've got... Were you sticking a fork in the dishwasher <laughs> at the time or something like that? Yeah. What like you in, doing into, the, into, the, the the, into the utensil tray? That's not going to trip the what power. What else were my you friend. doing at the time? That's the thing. Not, like like that, nothing. I wasn't on, doing anything. But uh, that's what the thing. On the one, kids on one in the house? side, on one side of our kitchen, we have dishwasher, washing machine, tumble dryer, electric kettle, George Foreman grill, which uh, which is nice. amazing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And and then the lights and stuff. If I'm running the dishwasher, the washing machine, and the tumble dryer all at the same time. It's 50-50 that the, the fuse is going to trip because yeah. they've, they've got like these ultra sensitive fuses in so that if the kids, God forbid, shove something in the friggin' outlet, it's going to drop. You know, the power is going to cut before they do, basically. So, yeah, like they're, right. they're, they're very sensitive. So if I yeah, but turn 240 the kettle volts, on, like... it's going to have a problem. So you're saying on that side of the kitchen, you've got fridge, baby bottle thing, 
toaster. Yeah. What else is running over there, Sips? I don't feel you're giving us the whole story. Um, there's like the fridge, freezer, the kettle, the toaster. The kettle wasn't on at the time. The okay. toaster, the baby bottle thing, um, and that's it. That was all that this was plugged like in on that side. But I'm CSI saying that if the, kitchen. If, the, if, the, if the fridge motor kicks in at the exact oh, maybe. instant your toaster's going... And the baby yeah. bottle thing's going. It might just well. The baby bottle thing was on, but it wasn't running. Circuit break. Did you have washing machine or or um? Oh dishwasher? yeah, washing machine is is probably on that that switch, but it wasn't on at the time. Yeah. Uh, dishwasher maybe. It's really weird, like because the oven has a clock on it, but the oven isn't on that switch because the clock was still intact you know like that's usually the first sign that like you've lost power right you see the stupid fucking digital clock on your oven blinking that's because right yeah. tripped or whatever but that it wasn't affected so it had to have been the toaster okay i don't care what you guys say i'm gonna stick with the double pop of the toaster all right then and do, it's me so a favor. do me a favor repeatable yeah. experiment all right okay well i'll try but it's impossible to get that double pop like especially when you want it <laughs> <laughs> it's never gonna happen. But, uh, it's like uh, it's such a weird thing. But Sips, when, when the toast pops, there's less power going to the toaster. It stops. Oh. I know, but maybe it's like, like like that constant like one minute it's using a lot of power and then the next minute it's using none sort of but thing. But that's not and maybe how fuses work. Well, I don't fucking know. I'm not an electrician. All I'm saying is that that's the only thing that happened. So it had to be the cause. Unless, no. like, yeah. maybe somebody threw a fucking EMP into my house without me realizing yes. it. EMP and then grenade. that caused half of my kitchen to lose power or something. I think but Lewis's explanation makes more sense. Something, like, let's, like I said, let's say that the fridge motor kicks in. As the toaster's going, it's been going for a little while. You know, there's a bit of current building up. Also, toasters and kettles are all about surges of power because this you got to you heat know, an element very quickly so it could it this could happened easily last be that. week okay you guys you guys gang got ganged up it's on not me okay, last up. week There's only two yeah, of yeah, us. no 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 and you guys no, were, were convinced that you're right, right about gif and gif and somebody made a really valid point how do you pronounce giraffe how do you pronounce it's graphics? a g and an i how it's do you pronounce g graphics? and an i I, sp I pronounce it graphics because there's a G and an R, so the G is a hard G. But when a G is next to an I, it's a soft G, right? So you what wouldn't about the pronounce word it give. giraffe. The word give. I would say jiv. <laughs> 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 fuck the English language. Seriously, it's terrible. What the fuck? Man. All right. Uh, one nothing, was... P-Flax, but I will get you. <laughs> okay. At some point, I will get you. One God day. One day. It's not, this isn't the end of this. this it's, a, it's, a, it's a valid point, though, you know, with the no, pronunciations and stuff. GIF. Who says GIF? That Me. just sounds dumb. GIF sounds way better. 66% of the people in this conversation say GIF. I know, hmm. but, like, you can't count Lewis's opinion on anything. He's so jaded. I am um, I'm a broken man. He's I've a broken, a jaded man. And wow. he's at that point in his life where he's pretty accepting that he's done. Yeah. And like if the Grim Reaper showed up today and was like, Lewis, you're done. He'd be like, yeah, take it. I'm done, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with all he'd this. He'd say, no. uh, Grim Reaper, huh? I bet, uh, I bet you take a shit just like everybody <laughs> I, else. I call bullshit <laughs> What's on makes that. You so special? See, the problem with Grim Reapers, I read this thing on Reddit about the Grim Reaper. And I mean, this guy is not what he says he is at all. And here's a million reasons why. And then somehow talking about financials and the pools and stuff in there as well. Mm. So that's, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. You, you've got me there, Sips. <laughs> I, got, I got you bad. You got Nice. Me. I got you got you. me that. That's right. So one, one we've done me. 50 minutes of bum chat. We we're supposed oh to talk God. about games oh, in this shit, podcast. Yeah. So at um, some point we were meant to, yeah. All right, video what games. What have you guys been doing this week or playing games or doing in your lives this week? Rust. Go. Rust. Rust. More rust. rust. I've been, I've been playing rust, rust for fucking oh, what, like a week and a half. And last Fuck. night was the culmination and we've stopped now until the next wipe. Me personally, I've stopped until the next wipe. That's it. When's the next wipe? A week's time. So, well, isn't it every week? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's well, it depends on the server. So it's every two weeks. So we got ah. we got to a point last night, and it was it was it was an all in. 
Okay, and we we'd had a. I mean, Sips came and visited our little orcs nest. I was impressed. It was really good. Well, and every time I log in, the guys who are there overnight, like there's this American crew. They take it very seriously, especially because they're referred to as the Americans, and they're you know we right. tell them how hard work and they are. They're like, yeah, we get shit done. So they sort of get in there and they build this base. So we've now got our inner keep with a wall around that, and now a wall around that. So it's like double walls. We, it's a huge amount of land that we've enclosed. And there's like, we've had 50 people in the clan, like just spread out all over the place. And we have about 30, 40 people online sometimes. So last night we got a whole bunch, it was like 20, 25 of us, which is huge. In Rust terms, that's a huge number of people online at once. And we raided this nearby river base. And we'd made C4 and rockets, and I was like, the general, I was like, right, sniper team here, uh, security team there, we need medics, and we need this, and we need a breach team, and we need a C4 team, and a rocket team, and everyone was like, oh, you know, we did it, we get into the base, and oh, we, we were so bad at breaking into this base, we wasted all our resources, and then the, the smarter, more experienced players just started fucking with us. Okay, so even though some of them, I don't think it was their base, one of the things we brought with us was a door and a lock. So when we blew the front door, we could put our own door down, lock it, and then they wouldn't be able to get back in. They'd have to C4 their way back in, but obviously we're in their base where their C4 is probably, so they were like stuck outside. So yeah. we go inside, we get building privileges, we put the new door on the front door, we put a lock on it, we lock it, but the guy that locked the door put the code in wrong, so he had to change the code. While he's changing the code, some fucker outside quickly runs up. And as soon as the door's unlocked, he enters a new code and locks us in. So oh. we're now locked in the enemy base <laughs> with no idea what this code is. And we're on the ramparts, which have not got much cover. And there's guys sniping at us from miles around with bows and arrows. Every time one of us leaves the base, they get killed. So the bad guys are now wearing our gear. So we're confusing them for us. They're killing our guys coming back in. We've run out of pickaxes. They're all broken. Fuck. We have to go back and get more stone and metal and wood, try and bring it back into the base. Our guys are so hyped up. They're shooting all our friendlies as they're bringing supplies into the base. People are losing their minds. So after about three hours of this, I'm like, right, that's it. I'm done with Rust. Let's all go home. So we all just leave. Like, we didn't even get any loot from this enemy base. We were there for like two and a half hours. Didn't get a damn Fuck. thing out of it. We wasted all our good shit. We just went was home. Was it the really big one that was close to your base? It was like, there was one near the water, right? It was like almost in the water. So it was like, we oh, called it the right, water okay. base. It was like a big tower. So... It was like, we just couldn't believe how bad it was. But now, I mean, it was a valuable learning experience. That was how we pitched it. We went home, we all dropped all our shit off. We all got naked, had a massive fight in the Thunderdome. And I said, if you want to carry on playing before this server wipe, guys, take what you can and flee to the hills. Like get far, far away from this place. Because those lads, they were Korean guys. All their signs were in Korean. When they get back in, they're going to be pissed and they're going to know it's us. So they're going to come at us hard. So just leave. So that's it. We've Jeez. abandoned the orcs. We're all just running for the hills. You scattered to yeah. the hills. That, that was sounds it. crazy. What a tale. Yeah, it yeah. was great. It was great. So we're going to start Man. again. And this time we're going to have a new, like my friend Monticus, you know Monticus, uh, Lewis, we, we play Dota with mm. him a lot. He, he's come up with this, friend. this scheme for how we can run the Orcs Nest more efficiently. Oh, um, for God's And it, it's sake. like going to be this three-tiered command structure with like three-tiered mm -hmm. three accommodations. So the peasants get like a little shack to live in, and then you've got the trusted Orcs, who are like the lieutenants, and they get they're, they, they have to live in the shack, but they can come into the main keep. And then you've got like the, the top or Orcs, the knobs, and we're like in charge, and we have secret codes and all this kind of stuff. So it's completely separate. We don't have to mingle with the peasant class, and uh, it's going to be great fun. Wow. Oh my God. When is it starting? Uh, probably like a, almost a week today we have to start again. Get everyone logged in. Because we honestly, we, when we have like 20 or 30 people all gathering. So it'll be when this podcast goes out. Yeah, basically. probably. Yeah, probably that evening we'll probably start again if the wipe happens that on, on time. Because um, sometimes it can be a bit slow. But it's so, it, when you log into the fresh server and there are no buildings anywhere, it's amazing. Like it's just, it's just incredible. People just go insane. And you're all just spears and bows. If someone finds a gun, they're like the king of the server. Um, wow. And you sort of, you build up your castle and you've got to find a good place. And animals are like a real problem. You haven't got any guns. So if there's a bear, you're like, holy shit, we're going to lose like eight people to this bear. Um, <laughs> it's really good. It's really, it's really exciting. It's a fucking great game, man. Yeah. I've, I've also been playing Rust a lot this week. I joined Pyrian for a bit, checked out the uh, Orc's Nest and stuff. It was very impressive. 
Um, and then I went off on their server to try to to build my own place. I wanted to like build my own house and just go through like the the throes of rust sort of thing. And it was pretty challenging. I got killed a few times. I killed a few naked people. It was pretty fun. And then I switched server completely and went off on my own to try to like, you know, make my my own little kingdom or whatever. I recorded that as well and posted a video of it. And um, apparently like two hours later, uh, everybody had seen the video. People went on, found my house, fucking blew it to smithereens, killed me, stole all my shit. Uh, and then a bunch of people started trying to rebuild it as a memorial site. So like I was, all night I was getting tweets from people with screenshots of like, hey, you know, we just found your dead ass body and your house is half blown up, but we tried to rebuild it for you. And we've put a whole bunch of signs up and everything. So later on, I'm going to play and go check it out and yeah. start again from scratch because man, that game is so unforgiving. It's it so is. hard, but fuck, it's so fun. It's crazy. So yeah. it's so much fun. And it's there, gotten there so much better. Long since. Way. There are some downsides. Uh, the hacking is a problem. Um, yeah. right. And they have recently, they've done things like grass is now much lusher and thicker. It looks beautiful when you're on your own, but when you're in a group of like 20 or 30 people and you're trying to attack a base around big player structures with lots of players and lots of combat, the game lags really badly. So the next thing they need to do is work on the optimization of that because it's really yeah. hard to have those big fights when it's just lagging. Like, I, I, I mean, I've got a really good machine. Brand new machine is really good, and I still get problems with the the lag because it's just underperforming. I think, but um, yeah, I, th I think it's probably to do with the amount of info that could be transferred via the network. You know, that's the, always the problem with large groups of people. It's not necessarily the graphical issue of rendering large groups of people. It's it's the issue of of getting all of their network information together and d distributing it to fifty yeah. people from fifty people to fifty other people is pretty tricky. I remember yeah. EVE Online fleet battles were oh. just like one frame I mean, that's per what second. They, they that were slow mo thing for now, though, right? So basically, the EVE Online battles now happen in like slow mo, like over six hours or whatever. I never liked that because so, it's like it's all right, guys. It's meant to be slow. I was like, what a fucking uh, cop out. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, mm. but yeah, no, Rust is great. I've been playing it a lot. I've been I I've, I've been playing that a lot this week, and I've been playing um, Hyper Light Drifter, which I picked up too, which is very fun so far it's really weird and confusing but it's like very pixely sort of um i guess it's like a bit like um binding of isaac in the sense that it's sort of like uh, i don't know like um sort of minimalist isometric sort of thing you have like a bit of health or whatever and you have to dodge things and you know, figure out patterns of stuff attacking you or whatever. It's a little bit unforgiving, it can be a bit hard. Uh, and you sort of progress through these like areas of this map and get to bosses and collect keys and stuff. It's pretty fun, actually. It's nice. I like it. I would recommend it. Well, there you go. Uh, I've never <laughs> played it. Sorry, I was just distracted. There's some building work going on outside my window. And it's like... Yeah. I was distracted I was because some wood pigeons. Pflax has gone to buy it and he's playing it right now. No, no, no some, some wood it. pigeons literally have made a nest on my roof and they keep flying <laughs> out the window. And then... <laughs> so Man. Sim starts talking about this game he's played that neither of us are interested in. So as soon as he said Hyperlight Drifter, we both tuned out. I looked out the window at these guys and got distracted Fuck. by what their, their big bag of Jeez, sand there. You guys are the worst. Pflax starts looking at pigeons. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, so sorry. I'm sorry. Sips. Thinking about how to pronounce GIF and GIF and all the while too, so that you can team up on me again. But they fly right it's at the window flash. here and then veer up at the last second to land on well, there. anyway, on the roof, and I hear them walking around up there and tootling to each other. I'm, I kind of want to see what they're up to with a mirror on a pole. Just having a little toot to each other. Anyway, Hyperlight Drifter is pretty good. It's pretty fun. It's nice looking too if you like pixels and pixel animation and art and stuff and it's fun you you just go around and chop things with this sword and you get a gun and stuff huh. it's cool yeah i'm gonna try and pick up dark souls oh he said it's good too hard, um, hard yeah that's so that's officially out this week it just came out like yeah. two days ago or whatever so by the time this podcast comes out everyone will be like sick of it um, yeah probably yeah Spe Who speaking knows? of pretty good i want to give a shout out if i may to a guy called John Boys, B-O-I-S. It's J-O-N-B-O-I-S. I think that's his name on Twitter. He works for SB Nation, which is like a sports network. And he oh, yeah. does a series called Pretty Good, which he just takes a thing that he's kind of interested in that's pretty good. Like he does a thing about the guy 
don't know if you remember this, Sips. It was a guy who decided he was going to go up as high as he could on a lawn chair that he had tied helium balloons onto. Did you hear um, about this? Vaguely, yeah. The Simpsons had Think... a reference to it one time. He basically had... Yeah, it rings a bell. It was yeah. a regular lawn chair. He had a little packed lunch with him, a camera, and an air pistol to shoot the balloons so that if he got too high, he could shoot the balloons and come back down. That's right. And he decided to just go up as high as he could. And he went way higher than he ever would have anticipated. He was like thousands of feet in the air. And he's on a walkie-talkie to his wife on the ground. He's like, holy shit, I'm really high up. He drops the pistol so he can't shoot the balloons. He's just like drifting. They, they, he's, they have to ground all these flights and everything. Anyway, he, so he did a video about that. He did one about that Russian guy that like came within a whisker of launching all the, the Russian nukes. Um, oh, in, yeah. Uh, I think it was the 60s. Stories. And that's really interesting. And he does ones about It was because of like well. a solar flare or something, wasn't no, it? No, I, I believe like, what it was was something. because the system that they have involving satellites involved looking along the sort of line of the horizon from a great distance. And if you're looking at that distance, you should see flares of, like of the rockets being launched silhouetted against the sort of the background, if you like. So the problem was the sun came up and hit these mountains in just such a way that it looked like a launch. It's something like that. But he, so he does these videos. They're about 10 or 14 minutes long. And they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. He's got a load of them. He's got like seven of them out. And they're tragically underviewed for the amount of effort he puts into them. I definitely want people to watch his stuff. And he did a really funny series called Breaking Madden, where he just destroys the game of John Madden and creates characters that are like insanely overpowered or like ridiculously bad. Or he tries to make this one insane play. Um, it's brilliant. All his stuff is brilliant. And he should be, he should be way bigger than he is. Fuck. Well, there you go. Sorry, did you did you just say something? Because uh, oh, it's a, re like a oh, well done, Sips. Well done. Yeah, because like a, a family of pelicans <laughs> just moved into my garage, and I was they watching them in. nest with each other. And oh man, were you talking? Sorry. Yeah. I, no, that sounds cool. Actually, I'll, I'll I'll check it out. I like the break the sound of Breaking Mad, and that it's great. Good. He, there's a character called Beef Tank, where he makes him the smallest, lightest guy he can, but gives him all the biggest physical stats he can, and he just runs through the enemy <laughs> team. So he makes the he makes the opposition team as lo as little and stupid as he can, and sees how nice. how good Beef Tank can be. It's like the the whole saga of Beef Tank is amazing. So yeah, his series are really good. You'd love it, Sips. It sounds good. I like you that. You wanted to do a sort of similar thing, didn't you, with Football Manager? I did do Breaking Football Manager, which was a complete ripoff, and I acknowledged that in the video. But um, Football Manager is not as... Like, he edits his videos really well. He spends a lot of time on them. and he Because he, it's a bit more graphical and interesting, it was easier to see. So I, I did a thing where I just made a league where all the teams were amazing at one thing. So one team was all about pace. One team was all about strength. One team was all about finishing, but they all had one in every other stat. But it's much harder to have Football Manager run like that because it automatically beefs up certain stats. So even if you try to set everything to one, it'll set it to 10 and say, oh, you can't have that. Like it's no oh, player okay. would have 20 strength and one stamina or whatever. So, it, 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 you know, you can't do it, unfortunately. But um, I wish I could because I'd love to try that. But it was, it was, uh, it was interesting, but, I, you know, it wasn't worth continuing. It wasn't, wasn't pretty enough the way Madden is. Man, I have not played a Madden game for so long. Like, I think the last time I played a, a Madden game was like Madden 95 or something. <laughs> like, it was like a long ass time ago. But I, apparently now the graphics and stuff are like, like fucking hyper realistic yeah, and they get all like that. Like, yeah, if you get an injury, it, it does like that sniper elite thing where it shows you a close up of their knee. It's like cracking. And so you know oh. it was a knee injury and stuff like that. But oh, yeah, it, man, I mean, it looks crazy. incredible. Oh the guys like the bounce off each other in just the right way. And it's nice. very good. But the problem is like, A, it's a console game. And I don't own a console. Like I, I used to have on my PS3, I had Madden and baseball games and stuff. But the other problem is they're way more fun when you play against someone else. And I don't know anyone around here that plays games because I live in like mum and dad central. So... My mate, my mates live way over in London. They don't play games anyway. None of my neighbors are going to come over and play Madden. So I'm just like playing against a computer is kind of boring. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? Like with stuff like that, especially like console games, like couch games where you need to have somebody there to play. Like as you get older, you know, you don't just have people that can come over and play couch games with you anymore yeah. sort of thing. 
Like, like I, you know, I know with FIFA you could play that online against other people, but I didn't dare because I was just terrified of, of getting completely stomped. Stomped but, um, by a ten-year-old exactly. who's really good He'd at be like, FIFA. Yeah. Fucking idiot! Fucking suck, granddad! Yeah. Chat. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't take this. I just can't I don't take like it. this. <laughs> yeah. No, I know what you mean. Oh man, what about you, Lewis? Games? Have you been playing anything recently? Well, I couldn't really play anything when I was at yours. I only got back on Monday. And so I came in on Monday and I played a bit of Factorio with Duncan, which I'm still loving. Honestly, like that game, if they can add some more mods to it, if they add some more stuff to it, I, I could just play that game forever. I'd play it through again. If they add some more stuff to it, maybe some more power yeah, options. I'd, I'd and... play it through again for sure. Yeah. And um, I think that's just it's really good. I, I, we've, we'd finished off our Master of Orion game, which was not great, but um, I'm no. looking forward to Stellaris and... Uh, yeah, I'm Stellaris sure there will be a new May, right? Civ game. Oh, um, yeah, we should do another Civ point. game, but Stellaris looks amazing and uh, Hearts of Iron 4 comes out soon. I'm super hyped for both those titles. Yeah, I'm actually excited for that. So You're that'll be, a that'll big be really um, fun. fan of the Grand Strategy stuff, aren't you? Love um, it. Flex, yeah. What I like about you, Lewis? A bit of Grand Strategy. And then Warhammer Total War at some point is coming out too. I love a bit yeah. of Grand Strategy, me. Yeah, if I can, if I can play it, that's that's. Do you ever play any of the hardcore gorgeous. ones like Crusader Kings and fucking? Do you know what Victoria I have? I haven't stuff? really delved into Europa Universalis and Nukes Creator. They're great games. They've always been at arm's length from me, I'm afraid. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to um, the Hearthstone expansion. They oh, keep yeah. trickling out these cards week by week. Have you? They've been doing it for months now. It feels like they just. They've. Do you know what? It's such a brilliant way to hype up an expansion just to release like one card with. They're giving all the pro the pro streamers and stuff cards yeah. to release as well to just. I they mean, didn't, honestly, this, they didn't this give expansion. one to Terps. Terps went all the way out there and they didn't even give him a card to review. Well, yeah, because he's not really big enough, is he? Unfortunately. No. Um, they guy. wanted us to, they basically said, we'll give you one if you promote it on the main channel kind of thing. They're really doing it like hardcore, full on promotion. Like, you know, right. p- these, these Twitch streamers are supposed to make YouTube videos about it and they're getting like hundreds of thousands of views because people are interested in, it's really interesting actually. But yeah, so they, they released, um, some of the, the new old gods. So I think all of the old gods have been announced now that are going to be like the 10 mana cost massive cards. God. And so the, the latest one was um, Yogg-Saron, who is basically when you cast him, he his battle cry is that he will cast a random spell for every spell that you've cast the game. Oh so maybe God. you've cast like, maybe you've Jeez. cast like, maybe you're playing like a frost mage, okay? And so you start off and you like frost over them and you uh, fire blast and freeze them all and just keep you know keep them controlled right flame strikes and blizzards and all that you get to 10 mana you drop your yogg on and he casts like 10 random spells now the problem is is that they're targeted randomly as well right so he might cast a free pyroblast and it might hit him it might hit you it might yeah. hit anyone right it might hit a one one imp you know who knows right and then also a lot of the pro- a lot of the spells in the game of buffs, right? But they're randomly targeted too. So if you've cast it, because if you're playing a Frost Mage, the likelihood is, is you're not going to have anything on your board, but they're likely to have some stuff that you want to get rid of, okay? Especially at 10 mana. And so the problem is, is that, that when they look at the maths of this thing, almost every time he, maybe this will change, okay? Maybe when we actually see it in real life, because people have made a Yogg-Saron simulator, okay, um, to, to simulate what would happen. Wow. So, you know, I could just press simulate here and it's like bear trap, okay? Bear trap casts on, you, you'll obviously it's a trap for yourself, but it's not really very good at 10 mana. Next <laughs> next spell, blessing of wisdom, cast on an enemy um, minion. Oh, great, you know. Next spell, renounce darkness. That's the warlock spell that, 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 that um, discards, that, that, that you know, t- basically turns you into a paladin no useless mind vision great you get one card uh wisps of the old gods okay you summon like seven wisps great do you see what i mean it's, it's kind of it's kind of weird and um you, and you end up putting like blessing of kings on your opponent's guy and and like sometimes i think like playing yogs are on unless you've played first of all you have to play like 10 spells which is pretty pretty challenging for most decks to play because you only get 30 cards right if 10 of them are spells Sure, you can like you know arcade into you can get some extra spells from some things like play a jewel scrap and get an extra spell or whatever. But but generally, I feel like ten spells is is a good a good number if you're building a deck around Yogg-Saron to get by the time yeah, you play. That sounds and, crazy. And man, I just I just I, I just don't think it's very good. So yeah, the other the other old girls are quite interesting. I don't know if you've seen those ones. It's like 
but they're, they're, they're interesting. I haven't um, kept up with it at all. Like, I got really salty with Hearthstone and just... We I were talking about it before, like the, long ass time. before we yeah. were recording, actually. Oh, sorry, let me just shut the window because the guys next door are doing some building work. Hold on. It's those pigeons. They're trying <laughs> to saw well, each other. pigeons. <laughs> I am totally hyped up, there. up about it, actually. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the hype train that Blizzard have been rolling about this um, expansion has really got to me and it's just, it's really exciting. And I've, been, on I've it. been kind of following it the whole way um, and I'm looking forward to it coming out. I think it will change the game in a good way. I think what they're doing with Standard and Wild is good. Yeah. yeah I like I like That, sounds, that but, sounds interesting. But, I'll probably come back and try Standard I, I, and Wild. Yeah, when it comes out, I'll probably play it for a couple of weeks before I, I get tired of it again. Um, but yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, that's all I need, right? So I need a couple of weeks of WoW, a couple of weeks of this, a couple of weeks of some new... Yeah. You know, like when Civ Six comes out, that'll be a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll, I'll put a week into Dark Souls. Who knows? We'll find out. I've been uh, playing Enter the lots Gungeon. of Gungeon. Oh also yeah, Enter the out. Gungeon. That's meant to be really hard. We played it a little it's, bit while you were over. Yeah, we played like a little bit of it. It's kind of like a uh, blend between Binding of Isaac, which I've been playing a lot of and really like, and Nuclear Throne. Um, but I think that Binding of Isaac is just a stronger game these days after it got remade and all the additions to it. I think it's just, it feels to me like Binding of Isaac's a stronger game. After playing a bit of End to the Gudge, I, I just didn't didn't like it. Niles, he is the real person too. And he's playing it right now, actually. So um, maybe he's got a different mm. opinion on it. And maybe I, I will pick it up and have I a I know look. people have been talking uh, but, about it a lot, but yeah. Well, yeah. you've been playing Sips. Heroes of the Storm, like a lot, Ugh. like most, mostly just like in the evenings. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. It's not like it's super casual though. Do you play it's it with pretty casual? Yeah, Discord I just play with goons. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, we got like like a little group that just sort of seems to play regularly in the evening, and then a couple of other people that I know on Battle.net or whatever have a little group. So I, I usually can get into like a, a pre-made, and I just stomp around and win and lose and it's fairly fun it's not amazing but it's casual enough and it, it's just constant team fighting like it, there's no sort of i don't know it's not like you don't get that flow like you get in a game of dota you know where like things start off and you you sort of jungle or you get you know some gold and items and stuff like they've taken a lot of that stuff out of the yeah. game and all you do is just go around as five and just fucking team fight. Which my, is my problem with a lot of these these games that try to copy Dota is they don't have the super high sort of late game clutch moments where it's do or die and the game is lost in one simple thing. Like mm. accidentally cancelling your TP might cost you the game if, if you know in certain instances, yeah. or you bought the wrong item, or you know you you die back or something. And yeah, that, yeah. that kind of stuff, I I really like. The fact that the, the the tension and the sort of the scale of drama of Dota in a game, in, in in most games, you know, it's a little back and forth, and then one team wins a couple of big fights in a row, and it's over. That's like the average game. Yeah, or yeah, you, yeah. you've been ahead the whole time, and you just didn't realize it until you start fighting. And then you're like, "Holy shit, we're so far ahead! Let's just end," and you win it in like thirty minutes. But when you get these games that go like an hour, hour and ten. And it's been, it's been, you've just been focused the whole time and the drama is just ramping up and up and up and up and it's just, it just gets so <laughs> yeah. tense. And I know me and Lewis have had a ton of games like that where it just comes down to like one moment. And I don't think that many other games copy that anywhere near as well. And some of the drama no, you get I don't in Game of Dota so. is just crazy. Yeah. That's the thing. If you like all that kind of stuff, I mean, for me, ha like committing an hour and 10 minutes to a game and while it has its ups and downs and everything and it it's pretty enjoyable the thing i like about heroes of the storm is just like 20 minutes is done like, yeah, yeah no matter it's, what it's, yeah, you know like a, a team fight decides like the end of the game pretty much if it's not already just a big stomp and you're done you just move on you know like that's all i have time for in the evenings yeah. like i don't I, I can't really play like an hour and 20 minutes of one game of dota sort of thing as much as i'd like to i think if i had more time i would but for now I'll just settle for Heroes of the Storm and it's grindy ass, <laughs> grinding <laughs> out heroes and fucking, I hate that the, some of the sk skins, like you just have to buy, you can't unlock them any other way. Yeah. It's just like little niggly things like that, that kind of annoy me about it. But overall, I think it's pretty fun. You know, the fact that you can just pick it up and play it, especially if you have a couple of people that you know that play it as well. It's, 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 it's yeah. amazing how, enjoyable, how good yeah. Blizzard are at making those, those kind of games. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're, yeah. they're there's they've got there's enough skill in Hearthstone that you can play it professionally and apparently, you know that that that's the the nature of of Hearthstone is that there are some guys out there who can play it 
and understand it at such a level. But it's also yeah. a game that I can play, which I played like two games before we started this morning, just goofing yeah. around, stupid, and I can still yeah. enjoy that. And it's the same with Overwatch. I can just drop in and out of Overwatch. I haven't played it much, honestly. It was It's fun enough. But again, it's yeah. not a game that I get the same satisfaction from. I don't feel that any of them create those moments that you will remember no, weeks I'm, and months I'm start- later, you know? That almost has become a bit of a trend for Blizzard now. Like, I feel like overall, anytime I play a Blizzard game now, I just, I leave thinking that was fun enough. But yeah, it doesn't yeah. blow me away like a Blizzard game used to sort of thing. You know, like the like when I started playing WoW and I got really into WoW and yeah. playing it like all the time, I was totally blown away by it how awesome it was and i enjoyed yeah. it and everything i mean i, I haven't but, played it in years and i there are still things that i remember from when i mean i, yeah. I played it a lot like maybe 10 years ago and it's yeah, still yeah. really some of the moments and the things i can still remember the map and the look of it and the items that i had and big raids that we did and all that so it's still it's burned into my memory and yeah yeah i feel like with their other games there's nothing that's come along that's tried to repeat that it's almost like they've no. gone the other way and just making and I I'm not I'm not being like dismissive here, but they're almost like the mobile gaming of PC gaming, I think, in a way. And that it's just something yeah, you tap it's, away and yes, it's fun enough, but it's not gonna stay with you. Yeah, it, it's sad in a way, but I, I, I tend to agree. Like Overwatch I was really excited for. I thought, fuck, you know, this is it, you know, new IP, you know, they're gonna be able to do like some crazy stuff with this. It's gonna be really good, it's gonna be really exciting. And I like I just I I left I got into the the beta yeah, and, yeah. and stuff and I played it and I was just really underwhelmed like you know I just thought really this is it you know like after all that I I just thought I was expecting the game maybe my expectations were too high I thought you know fuck this game is just going to blow me away and it really didn't and like now I'm just a bit bummed out about it like yeah. I don't even care when it releases i haven't pre-ordered it you know i'll probably play it but but you know it's you know, gonna it's, be huge it, it's not gonna be like one of those things for me like like wow was or or you know like when starcraft 2 came out fuck i was so hyped and i loved it so much and everything like i couldn't wait for a new starcraft to come out and everything and it was like i just don't feel like that about overwatch at all do you like, suppose just, that that the reason that they've gone and I mean, it's obviously a very deliberate decision from them. Um, do you rec- do you remember they were making that game that was going to be some kind of an MMO thing that was going to be this vast and complicated thing, and then they abandoned it? I can't remember what it was going to be called. I think it, yeah, it was um, it was like called like um, Titan Project Titan yeah. or something like that. It was, I think, it was meant to be Destiny, from what I understand. Right, and elements of Overwatch featured in that as well so it was going to be this this sort of like mmo hybrid sort of shooter game um that just ended up becoming destiny in the end right and yeah but and I, then I they sort if... of had a bunch of leftover assets and stuff and they were like maybe we should just make this like you know team fortress style you know shooter but game do you instead. suppose that the the fact that they almost got their fingers burnt on the project of that kind of complexity. Like, I, I don't feel like Blizzard would try to make WoW again now. Certainly, no. certainly that's not the kind of thing that they would make again. They would make something no. that was kind of like WoW, but way more just fun and goofy and you can dip in and out of it. And that's, I, I kind of feel like what I really would love to see from Blizzard is they've got so many different games that already fill that niche and they're making a fortune from them. I mean, they must be the one of the richest games companies in the world, if not the richest. They've got to be, yeah. If, so yeah, why not? not the, yeah. let, let's, let's, let's see Blizzard do a game that's got real depth and complexity and is a real, you know, you can really get your teeth into it um, and doesn't just cater to the, the casual crowd because Blizzard are big enough now that if they put a game out like that, I think people would fucking love it. I really do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a hard one. I think that they, I think that they're really into esports and they want all of their games to become esports, which is you know understandable. I'm not sure I they are that, actually. I don't think they are. <sighs> I think they I, strive I think, to. Mm. I don't think they always get it. No, you know, I, like I, I Hearth- honestly don't mm. think. I mean, when they made Hearthstone, I don't think they were. Their, their, no, their pitch yeah. wasn't. This is going to be an esport, and I mean, Heroes of the Storm is clearly not meant to but be that's a the big same, esport. But some companies are actively fighting against their game becoming an esport. Yeah. Like Super yeah. Smash Brothers is something which Nintendo actively don't yeah. want to become an esport, and <laughs> people want it to be. I do. I don't yeah. think the games company gets to decide no, uh, whether they, but, their their thing becomes a successful esport or not in these days. I don't know. I don't mm. know. Heroes of the Storm. I think that 
I think that they did design it with esports in mind. Um, it doesn't seem like it, maybe, but the fact that they're doing Heroes of the Dorm and all of this stuff on ESPN and everything shows me that yeah, they're trying to promote it and. But I, I have honestly it think it's like more a, of an advertising esport, but. But I, I think to that yeah. is like we can get in on some of that esports. This is a little bit like just having all the package shit. It's like saying, okay, I want to, I want to, I made a game, I want to promote it, and then you give it to an agency and they say, okay, we're going to take it out to Twitch streamers and YouTubers, we're going to make billboards, we're going to do everything, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But esports is just one of these other things which they do as part of the, the release of a game now. And yeah. it's just, it's kind of done by the community people. They don't care. They don't really think about, maybe they'll add a few little spectator modes and stuff in in back end to, to facilitate it. But really, they don't care. I, I think Blizzard Games, Overwatch and um, Heroes of Storm are pretty clowny now. And like, not, like, like they, they feel kind of quite... They don't feel they don't take themselves too seriously. Not that they've ever really done, but but no. nowadays even more so. You know, here's yeah. the storm. It's very loosey goosey with how like you know you can have like clown costumes and alternate world versions, like good versions and bad versions of famous heroes. It's nice. It's nice to have that. Blizzard, Blizzard universe is very close to us. Anyway, let's um, let's go through the questions that the uh, people have for us uh, before we end oh, yeah. this podcast. All right, I've got, got them ready. Sips? Oh, yeah. I, Glad you have. Uh, man, I am always super ready. Like Let's it took me these, five these seconds amazing... to do it before we so, started. So we, get... we record the podcasts on Thursday mornings at uh, 10 a.m. So Sips tweets out at 10 a.m. on Thursday. If So if you want to ask questions to us, I guess send them at like 9.55. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I check my feed. I check my Twitter feed notepad. regularly. Yeah. So put them in there and I'll put them in a notepad. All right. First one. Cheers. From a person named Merely a Follower. Um, Merely a Follower asks, any plans for guest appearances for the Triforce podcast? Pretty good question. I think we kind of touched on this last week when we said that we were happy just having it us three and our dynamic and that was the format of the show sort of thing. But Terps wants to be in it. Um, right. But I guess like... Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind, but I think that I think that we got we got the I, got, I think we got the decent. I think we got the, the format locked down. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, if one of us I, was I'd away like for test. some reason, let's say, then I think having a someone in to sort of as a as a that guess, would work. That, yeah. That would if work. if but I think that what would happen is if one of us was away, me if I was away, you know, you could fill in for me with someone else. That would be easy. But if if Sips was away, me and you would record some Dota, and if. P Flats was away. Me and Sips would record some other stuff for the channel. So I feel like I feel like um, the only chance that someone you want to have a guest in is if I'm going to be away. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But I mean, or we can always work around that. Consider recording then, together. Yeah, yeah, we could do. Yeah, but like, I'd I, like to watch that. I I think like I think guest appearances and stuff. It, it's a weird one, right? Because we have a big network of people that we do content with, that we hang out with, and stuff like Terps or whatever. But, and like, no offense to Terps, I, I'd like to have him on. But like, if we were going to get an actual guest, I would like it to be someone outside of our network. Somebody yeah, that, that we don't cool. really know. Somebody who's like maybe like, you know, some big game developer, some big fucking name in something or whatever, you know, like, let's fucking get Arteezy on here. <laughs> or, so, you know, it's just somebody that is, is well known in some other circle sort of thing that, yeah. that you know, I, I don't know much about. Maybe I you know what? A game developer P-flex. would be great. Like that yeah. would be great because we could really grill them about games design and what's going through. I mean, I, I'd fucking love that. That would be amazing. Yeah. Or a so famous like, person, an actor. Yeah. Like, let's get Tom Cruise on Tom here. Cruise. We'll get Tom Cruise. Fuck. Okay. Tom Cruise. Do you know what? Actually, wait, do, great would you want Tom Cruise on here? Like, would you want to talk to Tom Cruise? <sighs> Not necessarily, but honestly, like, it would give us so much fucking exposure. It'd be crazy. Yeah, but like, I don't think he could do Tom Cruise. an hour and a half. I think yeah. he could probably give us, like, Five minutes max. He's yeah. a busy man. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if he's like a Scientologist. I mean, that that's a problem for me. If you're famous and you're listening to this, yeah, let us know. We'll if you want to be on a podcast, that. a really mediocre podcast, and you're for not like a Scientologist, minutes, get in touch. Yeah, and you're not a Scientologist. I'm either. not first. I am. Yeah. I, well, I'm accepting. Of all. If you're a woman, especially, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, about we'd male like some uh, some female company here on the on the podcast. Yeah, if you're Jennifer Lopez, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What a dad woman! You go. If you're uh, say a woman, Sam yeah. Fox or uh, something like that, <laughs> oh, get into it. Oh, oh shit! Fox. Cindy Crawford, circa 1980, 
six. Mm. Get at me. Helena um, Christensen. Pamela Anderson. Naomi yeah. Campbell. Pamela. Pamela oh, Marilyn anyway. Monroe. So, yeah, guest appearances. Well, I don't know. It, nothing set in stone, right? I, I mean, I yeah. say all this. Terp's probably going to be on the next one. So we'll just see. Next. Um, the next question comes from Noji um, and says... I mean, we've all played WoW. Since the WoW expansion is coming soon, will you be playing it? What are your opinions on the current state of the game? Uh, I will definitely be playing it. I'm looking forward to it. Current state of the game, I can't comment on because I played um, Draenor for like a month and then I haven't played again since. So No, me neither. Um, I mean, I, I generally, I like how much they cram into an expansion. I kind of like the systems that they keep putting into WoW and the different things that you're able to do. I like now that you can, you know, raid... Uh, without having to have like a big tryhard raid group. I like like looking for raid and all the casual stuff that sort of suits my uh, lack of time to play like these big games or whatever. Um, so yeah, generally still pretty happy with it. I, I feel like I get good value out of playing an expansion for a month and mm. then moving on with my life sort of thing. Pretty happy with WoW in general. I don't think it's going to be around forever, but as long as it is around and they keep, you know, innovating stuff and adding new shit to it, I'm pretty happy with it. Yep. Next. Um, okay, next. <laughs> uh, Max. Yep. A man named Max. Sips. If you're given the chance to, because this is a bit of a long one. If you're given the chance to become immortal, okay, so you can't Don't die. Go. You can't die of old age. There's no aging or anything. You'll, you'll never age. With the catch of being sent back 3,000 years in the past, would you do it? I fucking would, to be honest. I think that'd be great i mean you can't die right so like i think the first sort of like two thousand years would be a little bit shitty kind of boring there wouldn't really be much to do or whatever but you could like influence like small villages and you know just become like the leader and stuff and help them along and stuff and then once you get to like the medieval ages and stuff holy shit you know you're immortal you can't age or whatever you just do what you like leading into like modern day society and stuff i don't know do you, know do you know what I do? Do you know what I do? That's a long ass time. I'd go back three thousand years, and I would start a religion. And since I'm yeah. immortal, people would automatically believe. Like I'm, I'm going to assume we're unkillable and uninjurable. We're just, we're just this immortal, perfect being that cannot be harmed, yeah. right? So you can't I start die a religion, and, and my age. religion is super, super nice and chill. And it's just literally, no, no, no. We're all just going to get along and everything's going to be fine. And we'll get, there's not going to be wars about it. We're just going to be chill. There's not going to be any schisms because the rules are going to be real simple. Everybody just chill out. Like really, really simple shit. And they're not this complicated stuff that can be misconstrued and twisted. It's nice and simple. And I'm just going to say, hey, guys, let's just chill and see where we're at in 3,000 years. And if that doesn't work, I'll go back again and I'll make a new religion that's brutal and, and, and awful and see what happens then. And maybe it'll work it's out. See, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm mm. tempted to say that I would want to, like, just, you know, like, go off somewhere and not have any influence over anything. Because I think that, like, if you set up a religion and you were immortal, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen in 3,000 years, you know? Like, what if they, like, never bother getting around to creating Dota, PFLAX, because they're I'll too busy a, worshipping yeah, you? I'll be like... That'll be one of the early tenets is, right, guys, in about 3,000 years, we're going to have a game called Warcraft 3, and we're going to need to mod that <laughs> and create those. I mean, you know, you're not going to you're not going to influence the world too much, but I think that could Listen, be a Cave healthy Man, way you can If you it. arrange these sticks into a lane <laughs> pattern and you pretend that all of these little rocks are heroes that can level up to... <laughs> yeah, you can teach cavemen how to do yeah. it, and then that'll just go through the ages until finally it's developed. I don't know. It's a tricky one, but I think you have to you have to worry because um, first of all, one man can't influence very much. My feeling on this is that if you got sent back three thousand years, you're likely going to be. You know what happens is you're only one man. You know there's going to be wars. There's going to be fights. You're going to be even if you're a charge or the leader, or they find they can't kill you. As soon as they find they can't kill you, whoever's in charge is going to lock you up in a cage 
and r- and lock, you know, throw away the key. Imagine you got buried like underground, right? Oh and then my they god! Forgot wow, about that you, would and suck. And you were stuck down there for two thousand years. You think that you did suck. somehow manage to get out though? Like not even Kill Bill style, but like you'd have all the time in the world because you couldn't die, so you'd just slowly dig your way out. I guess I think you wouldn't. I think you'd go insane. I think you would. Uh, I think you would literally go into because you know what it's like for people who are trapped on their own in a That'd in be a, a cave fresh for a long hell, time. Yeah. They go completely fucking mental. I, yeah. You would lose your mind. I think it would be horrible. I, I think that what you'd have to do is you'd have to be, be very careful. So I'd probably work like I'd probably I'd probably use my knowledge right to to get some sort of high level position like a wizard or something right early on. Yeah. Okay. Because I know some stuff about chemistry and basic things. You know a little bit about history too. So maybe you'd be like an oracle. Okay. And I'd yeah. use that power to establish my own. Um, like island nation, okay? Like maybe in like somewhere hot. We'll somewhere call nice, it okay? America. Yeah. Uh, you'd know it was. You'd know it was there. <laughs> no, it could be like I don't know Malta or somewhere like that. Some some island where I'm like in charge. I'm the king. I've got a, I've got my own private army. That are, you know, but basically though, the, the longer you live, the more you have time to make these smart investments in what's what's popular and sell right. stuff, sell sell inventions to the world. You know, basically. Yeah basic stuff right yeah like um that wouldn't mess up the world too much and so i'd be like the you just want to be the only immortal person to ever go to the gadget show don't you i would be super (laughs) i would be super like secure this sounds a bit like the 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 man who fell to earth because he does that like he comes from mars he comes to earth and he patents a bunch of inventions that make him a load of money because obviously he's come from a slightly more advanced society so it's like the the, an early version because it obviously is written probably i think it was written in the 60s uh, so that he had like a Polaroid camera sort of thing, um, so you could you you could instantly develop pictures that you'd taken, and this was like a big gadget, and I think some batteries he came up with as well. So it was stuff like that. So he he changed things subtly, but he wasn't changing the past. He was in that present, yeah. and that's the problem. I think. I think I would have to be I'd have to be quite smart about how I set it up. Like I wouldn't be the king and monarch. I'd be like one of the members of like a council or like, or like a cabal yeah, like worm of- like worm tongue. You'd and want to be, be like right. the influencing, <laughs> and 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 obviously what happens? Tomato the members weirdo. of the cabal would slowly like get knocked out, but they'd all be anonymous, right? So it'd be like white robe, red robe, blue robe, whatever. And I'd always right. be like one of the one of the mysterious robes. And you've then thought way, about this a lot when more they than die. Us, I think I can rotate them in. Yeah, right. How I mean, how does immortality work in the sense that, like, if I was immortal and I jumped into a volcano? Like what would happen? Would would I would You're I lose all my skin? Now. Good luck. I know, but I know, but like, how, so like, what's the deal though? Like, do I lose? Like, can my skin I guess you burn just sink and stuff? Slowly or? into the volcano and down right. to the center of the earth, where you suffer in burning torment for for a, a fresh hell. Yeah, for we need eternity. lots of rules. That's the problem with immortality. Can you, can you feel pain when you're immortal? And exactly. Stuff? Like, I, oh well, yeah. What's the deal here? Yeah, I don't. Of course know. you would. Like, if you don't feel pain, how can you feel pleasure, Sips? Anyway. Uh, I have one more. It's not a question, though. All right. I I just thought thought I'd change things up a a bit this week. This is from Mia. It's actually just a nice compliment for us to end on a positive. Because we talked a lot about death and weird shit this time. So Um, Mia says, thank you for the gold that is your Triforce. They make the walk to uni the best part of my day. Uh, See, I knew people would use it as walking sort of... You know, like a yeah. thing they listen to when they're walking or, or commuting. That's really yeah, nice. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you very much. That's a really nice one. Thanks, Mia. Thank you, Mia. Thank uh, you. And thank you, everyone else who has listened yeah. to and supported the Trifles podcast. Thank you to Sips. Thank Thanks. you to Perian Flax. My thank pleasure. You to Flax's, My pleasure. Uh, wife. And forget for sorting the shopping out. Yeah. And <laughs> thank you, of course. To me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lewis. And uh, your Angus. <laughs> nice. That's good. <laughs> Uh, we'll see you all next week for some more of this bum fluff. All right. Bye. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.